What is up guys? Welcome to another video. If you guys just are arriving to this video and you guys just watched the video regarding the new brake lines and the Z1 uh, brake master cylinder brakes, you guys are exactly where you need to be. If you guys are new to the channel, my name is Milan and in today's video we're going to be working on my Z a little bit more. So it's on jack stands right now and I've got some more mods going on this thing. So I have some extended studs from ARP, I have new wheel spacers going on in the car, and I'm putting those on because I have a new wheel and tire setup. Uh, I'm gonna be changing out the wheels that I had on the car for some lighter ones that are more track oriented. If you guys have any guesses what they are, put them in the comment section now. I wanna see if you guys can get those right. Um, anyways guys, let's just jump right into it. We've got some stuff to do, let's get going. So when you wanna run aftermarket wheels and tires on your car, you might wanna run wheel spacers. So maybe the wheels that you bought aren't the ideal offset. Maybe you installed some larger brakes behind your wheel and maybe you're just trying to clear the spokes or maybe you have a square wheel and tire setup and you need to run spacers in the rear. Whatever the reason may be, to safely run spacers of nearly any size, you wanna run extended wheel studs. So a while back, I installed some extended wheel studs on my cord, and I've literally driven it for multiple years with no issues. I've gone to the track with them, I've winter driven it, I've done a whole bunch of things, and I've had no issues. For that exact reason, I bought extended ARP studs for my Z as well when deciding which ones to run. So they're strong, they're super long, they give you enough meat so you can basically run any kind of spacer without having any issues. So when you're looking at wheels and tires, and let's say you wanna run spacers, you wanna have at least the width of the stud, that much material for your lug nuts holding it on. If you don't have that on there, you're not safely running it. So let's get started with installing these ARP studs for my Z. So these extended studs here are not actually made for a Nissan 370Z. You can see they're intended for Subarus. There isn't a 370Z stud kit from ARP, but these ones here will work perfectly. So to get started, I'm gonna be changing out the studs front and back on the Z, so we're gonna need to get the car up in the air and on jack stands. So this wheel stud that you see here from ARP is going to allow you to run any kind of wheel spacer up to 25 millimeters. So the difference in threaded material from the stock stud versus the extended ARP one is 25 mils. So that means that you're gonna be able to put it on and take it off anything up to 25 mils. So to install this, it's pretty easy. We have to first take off the OEM studs. On non-drive axles, if you're simply replacing an OEM stud for another OEM stud, because they're quite short, you don't have to remove the entire braking assembly and wheel bearing. If you tap the old stud through the hub, you should be able to remove it from the backside of the hub by sliding it through the cavity found here behind the brake caliper. If you're installing longer studs, it won't exactly work. The brake caliper and rotor will need to come off to give us full access. So with a 22 millimeter socket and wrench, remove each of the caliper bolts and then remove the caliper and rotor. Then with a nut that's the same thread pitch as your stud, thread it onto the stud and make it flush with it. Give it about 10 gentle taps with a hammer and the stud will unseat itself. Take the nut off and slide the old stud out. Repeat the same procedure to the rest of the studs. Lastly, grab a wire brush and scrape away any rust or dirt that's on the hub because this is going to be the best time to clean the face with nothing protruding through it. So with all the front studs removed, it's now time to go ahead and install the extended ARP ones. Now, when I showed you guys the video a couple years back when I installed the extended studs on my cord, I used this cheaper process which uses spacers and some sacrificial lug nuts. So basically what you wanna do is you wanna pull the stud through the hub and you're using a lug like this but the thing is that if you actually care about them, well, you're gonna damage them. So you're not gonna to wanna to use these. This tool right here is the proper tool that you'll need to install studs. So this here does not destroy your lug nuts because it's properly tapered. There's a bearing on it, which allows it to spin independently from the hub face. So you're not gonna be damaging anything. You're not gonna be scoring anything. And you can use really fancy lug nuts to install them. Now, one thing to note though, is that if you have aluminum lug nuts, do not use an impact to get this done. Only do that if you're tightening them and installing them by hand. So to install the longer studs, slide it through the back side of the hub and pull it through as much as you can. Then install the stud installer tool over top of the threads, followed by one of your lug nuts. Because these lug nuts are made from steel, I can use my impact gun to zap them on. Ensure to not use too high of a torque setting because you don't wanna strip the new studs or your nuts. This DeWalt impact gun on setting number one will only torque the bolts to 40 foot-pounds, which is literally less than half of what the lug nut spec is for this vehicle. So it's going to be more than safe. Then just keep zapping the bolt until it's fully seated onto the back side of the hub. The inner splines of the stud will slightly deform in the hub, which will then secure it into place. 
Then remove the lug nut and the stud installer and repeat the same thing on the remaining studs. On a side note, ensure that you have open-ended lug nuts to allow the extra stud material to pass through. I'll link a couple good ones that I recommend in the description box. With all five installed, you can then reassemble the braking system. So the brake rotor goes back on first, over top of all of your new fancy studs. You can choose to use a single lug nut to hold the rotor in place for now. Then, turn the wheel to the side of the car that you're working on and slide the brake caliper over top of the rotor. Torque these caliper bolts up to 91 foot-pounds. With the ARP extended suds now up front installed, we can safely run any size spacer up to 25 mils. Moving on to the rears, it's a slightly more complicated process as the wheel bearing needs to come out. The short rear studs are getting replaced for the much longer ARP ones, which are the exact same Subaru WRX spec studs that we installed up front. Just like how the front calipers had to come off, the rears are no different. So using a 19 mm wrench, remove both of the caliper bolts and set the caliper out of the way. You should then be able to pull the rotor off by wiggling it, otherwise you'll have to wind back the adjuster for the parking brake shoes. With the rotor removed, you can now see the entire parking brake assembly. So starting from the top, we have the adjuster, the upper spring, then the hold down spring and the leading shoe, followed by the lower spring and the parking brake mechanism, and lastly, the other hold down spring and trailing shoe. So depending on the size of the extended stud that you're installing, you might be able to get away by just removing the parking brake mechanism and not have to go ahead and remove the wheel bearing assembly as well. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do both so that you guys know how to do the job regardless of the size of the studs that you're installing. With a pair of needle nose pliers, straighten the cotter pin and remove it from the axle shaft. Using the same pliers, remove the cover on top of the axle nut. Then with an impact gun and a 32 millimeter socket, zap off the axle nut securing it to the hub. And don't forget to remove the axle nut washer. To disassemble the parking brakes, I'll be using a little hook tool to remove the upper spring that's pulling both of the shoes together. Then wind back the brake shoe adjuster so that's in the smallest size. In the middle of both shoes, you'll want to twist the hold down spring 90 degrees in either direction, which will unfasten it from the backing plate. That will give you enough space to remove the adjuster. Then on the bottom, remove the lower spring that's holding both shoes together, then followed by the leading shoe. Keep it all together and organized because you're going to have to reassemble all of this later. Following that, twist the adjuster spring and remove the rear shoe and lower spring. This mechanism on the bottom of the hub is for the mechanical parking brake. We don't have to touch that so you can leave it as is. You should now be able to see the location of the four bolts that are securing the hub up to the knuckle. With the hub still attached to the car, I find this to be the best time to knock the old studs out using the same technique as before with the M12 nut and tapping them with a hammer to unseat them from the hub. Then from the back side of the hub, using a 17 millimeter socket, unscrew each of the four bolts securing the hub to the knuckle. Using a cordless ratchet like this one here will save you a bunch of time as it's a little bit tight for hand tools. It also helps if you press on the axle shaft inwards towards the differential to unseat the axle from the hub. This will give you a little bit more space to work with. Then after you mark the orientation of the wheel bearing, slide it off of the axle shaft. You can now install the extended studs just like before using the stud installer, lug nut, and impact gun. However, with the hub and wheel bearing removed, you can choose to use a press to remove and install all the studs, but I find it easier to use the cheap stud installer tool, a better option as it's much easier and quicker. This will save you a bunch of time, which in turn saves you money. With the hub back on the car and the bolts torqued to 65 foot-pounds, we can reassemble the parking brake assembly. Start by installing the trailing shoe and the hold down spring, then the leading shoe and the lower spring, followed by the adjuster and the upper spring. Enlarging the adjuster so that it's just about the same size as before, but even if it isn't, you can adjust the size of it even with the brake rotor installed on the car. So next up, the brake rotor needs to go over top of the entire uh, parking brake assembly and over top of each of the wheel studs. So in order to get it over properly, and you have to ensure that the pads for the handbrake mechanism aren't too far pushed out, make sure that this little thing is pushed in a little bit because you can always adjust it afterwards by pushing it out. So in order to do that, to push it out more, push through this little rubber boot. So you have this little hole. And then when you put the brake rotor over top of the studs, and then you slide it over top, turn it so that if you look through the hole, you can actually get to the little adjustment screw right here. 
high. Now, if you also need to adjust your handbrake assembly, that is how you would adjust it as well. So once you put the brakes back on the car with the caliper, go inside the car, pull the handbrake. If it works, terrific. If not, that is how you would adjust it. To tighten the handbrake, you're gonna wanna enlarge in this little piston here. If you wanna make it a little bit less slack, so let's say that the, the handbrake shoes are catching on the contact area right here, you then wanna make this distance smaller. But for the meantime, we're gonna get this. We're gonna put this over top of the studs and finish putting our brakes back together. Next up, the brake caliper needs to be put back over top using the two OEM bolts that we removed earlier. Slide the brake caliper over top of the rotors, fasten the caliper bolts up to the knuckle, tighten them in place, and then torque them to 62 foot-pounds. So because I still have the Z in the air, I have to be sure to torque up each one of the axle nuts before driving the car. So if you take a look over here, you'll see that the axle nut is on the axle shaft, uh, but it's not properly torqued up. So I need to either get someone else to press the brakes or do this with the car on the ground. That there will pretty much complete the install for the extended studs, both on the front and back side of the car. So if you guys have some washers, you guys can get this done, but if you guys wanna get the proper tool, it's like 20 bucks to get the proper stud installer tool. Doesn't ruin your lug nuts, doesn't ruin your studs, and the install is super easy. So the reason why I have those on the car is because I am not going to be running these wheels and tires anymore. So this is a set of staggered work VSXX 19 inch wheels. They're nine and a half up front, 10 and a half in the back. I've got two 45s up front and two 85s in the rear they're getting changed out for some lighter and stickier wheels and tires. Any guesses? So I'm gonna be staying with the same silver color scheme so you guys can tell that, well, I like silver on the Z. Um, I've tried black wheels, I didn't really love it, but uh, yeah, I have something else in mind. Any ideas? Let me show you. All right, so we've got some new wheels and tires inside these bags. Can you tell from the looks of them already? So these are 18 by 10 and a half. This is a square wheel and tire setup. And this tire size that I got is kind of weird because there's not many good tires in this spec. These here, these 285, 35R18s are probably the nicest tires that you can get in this size. Short from this, everything else is pretty much like an all season tire, which is kind of stupid because it's a pretty performance oriented spec. Ready? What do you guys think? These are 18 by 10 and a half NK RS05 RRs. These have the deep concave face. They're full square. There's 285, 35 R18 reinforced hand cooked tires on here. And these things are unbelievably nice. So the reason why I went with a square wheel and tire setup is because I wanna have a more track oriented alignment and I really enjoy driving my car. I love the Z and it's a great car to drive. Getting a set of wheel and tires in this spec is just gonna complement everything else that I've done to it. So all the SPL components on here, all the really nice parts that have been thrown on this car, they're all going to be shown and they're all gonna be able to be uh, fully utilized using a wheel and tire setup like this. So these tires have a reinforced sidewall on them. These are a 200 compound. They are super, super wide. Can't wait to run these things. Now, if my math is right, I should be able to run this wheel and tire setup both on the front and back, and I'll be able to run them without any poke because of the front upper control arms that I have on the Z. So if you guys saw in a previous video, I showed you how to install the SPL front upper control arms. Those allowed me to put a little bit of front camber in the front uh, to get more turn in grip, to get more fitment, let's call it. I can run a 10 and a half inch wheel up front in a performance oriented spec with no problem. So I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna throw those wheels in the car. So there you guys have it. We have the RSO5s on the front and back and they look absolutely incredible if you ask me. The fitment is perfect both in the front and rear. 
This is an 18 by 10 and a half plus 25. I have no spacer up front, but I think I'm gonna be running a 10 millimeter in the rear. Hence why we install these extended studs. Now, before I wrap up this video, I just wanna give you guys some extra info. So if you guys do end up installing some extended studs, just like what you saw in this video, the ones that press up against the backside of the hub, you wanna ensure that you not only torque your wheels up to spec, but after you drive your car for, let's say 10 kilometers at most, bring your car back home, torque your lug nuts again, maybe do that twice or maybe even three times just to ensure that all of the wheel studs are fully seated. Because if they're not, let's say one of them's kind of loose, you're not gonna have the proper clamping force for the wheel onto the hub. Now on another note, if you guys wanna find the tools, the products, or anything else that you guys saw in this video, including torque specs, you guys can find all that in the description box. I make it super easy for you guys, and I do a lot of the legwork so you guys don't have to. If you guys have any further questions, comment sections down there. Be sure to follow my YouTube channel, click the sub button, follow me on Instagram, it's at Millmast. If you guys are excited for the Z, if you guys wanna see some more Z stuff, stay tuned, be subscribed, because I've got one more thing coming up for the Z before we can put this down on the ground and drive this thing. So if you guys wanna see that, you guys know where you gotta stay tuned. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.